going to see her today. <laughs> I'm scared. Scared, can you believe it? Isn't it funny? 15 years living together and I'm nervous about seeing her. It's like the first few weeks. Being in love. I mean, I'm in love, I know that, but it's like the beginning again. When we go out for food and I wasn't even able to eat it. And one look from her could destroy me. I haven't seen her in so long. I'm excited. I've been deranged. Beside myself. Unintelligible with grief for the last six months. I didn't know you could even feel grief if someone was still alive. Maybe it's the wrong word. It feels like grief, sir. We haven't even died yet. I say we. We're supposed to die together, you see. Well, we did every other thing together. Every other stupid thing together, slept together. Woke up and filled the laundry basket together, bitched about work together, sat on the couch together, ate together, brushed our teeth and spat into the sink together. We got our manner of death together. Neither of us wanted to know. For years, we didn't know together. When everybody else was getting theirs, we agreed not to go. We saw what it did to people. It made them obsessed. If it said car accident, I mean, that was it. You'd be afraid to go outside again. Or fire. How could you even sleep at night? So we said we wouldn't get it. But then we got older. We started to think that not knowing is worse. One of our friends died. Train crash. He shouldn't have been on a train. If he'd got his slip, it wouldn't have happened. He'd never have gone near a train. I mean, I don't know how it works. But people are living longer these days. That's the statistic. But this is the sort of thing we started to think about. Start of the day, lying in bed. That's when it would come into my head first and rattle away there for the rest of the day. I kept it to myself. I didn't know she was thinking it too. It was such a relief when she said it at last. So we said we'd go together. Whatever it was, for each of us, we'd find out together. And I suppose support each other through it. It doesn't give you a date, the machine. I mean, think about it. It tells you you're gonna die from a snake bite. You move to Ireland, don't you? Not that easy to get bitten there. So it needs to wait. Death has to wait. I mean, in the end, it's always right, the machine. I know that, nobody doubts that. But I'm digressing. I'm excited, I'm sorry about today. Excited and scared shitless. We went together. Went to the machine together. We joked about it, pretending not to be bothered, but her eyes gave it away. I'll never forget her eyes. She was so scared, her pupils were all swollen up, just black holes instead of eyes. We'd talked about all the things that might get us. Well, you do, don't you? But what the machine said, we weren't prepared for at all. She was first. And it spotted out this little slip of paper for her. She clapped her hands over it and held it without looking, waiting for me to get mine. I did the same. Both of us facing each other, our hands tight together like we were praying. So we looked at each other. I'll never forget.
never forget her little white face. Big black eyes. Then we peeled our hands open at the same time and looked down. Mine said lightning. I swear to God, fucking lightning. I stared at it. And it was sinking in, soaking into me. Then, before I'd even understood it properly, I think as a reflex, I glanced over at her and she was staring at hers. Her face all pale and stupid like a drowned person. You said the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Lightning. I put my hand on her arm after a while. Her arm was cold. I thought about the drowned person again. That's what it felt like. In the end, we went home. I was holding her hand and not holding it, if you know what I mean. I think my fingers were touching it, but there was no grip. One hand brushing against another like a permanent accident. In the car, she started talking in this bright voice with a smile stretched over her face like nothing had happened. Now we know, she said. I don't know who pointed it out first, or if we both sort of knew all the time. We're going to die together. You can't avoid lightning. You can't move to another country where there is no lightning. It's so unbelievably rare as death by lightning. It couldn't happen to both of us individually at separate times. We both knew. If we were holding hands then, pull mine away. Maybe we weren't even holding hands, but I remember feeling like I pulled away. Something pulled away from her. Whatever it was, I never held her hand again after that. First, there was a week where we both just lived with it. We left for work at different times. We checked the weather forecast 12 times a day. If you were inside the house, under the roof, we might touch or stand near each other, but outside we were scared shitless. It felt like if we touched, it might smite us right there and then, a bolt of lightning. <laughs> Smoked. Smitten. The only chance we felt we had was that it was going to be both of us. If we're both going to get struck, then it can't happen in different places. That would be almost impossible. The odds would be astronomical. We made lists of all the ways that lightning could take us both out at once. We talked and talked about it, and we bought our rubber-soled shoes, and we, we threw out our golf umbrellas. Confident as we pretended to be, we knew we'd never feel safe. As long as we were together, all it would take was one second, one accidental brush of the hand, and death might grab its opportunity. I said it first, but I knew she was thinking it. It didn't even feel like a big deal when we said it. The last few weeks, we'd barely thought about each other or wrapped up in ourselves, our deaths. All alone with it already, all alone. When I said it, she agreed in one breath, like it was all one breath. Should we separate? Yes. I didn't know it'd be so quick. Fast as lightning. Slotting back out of each other's lives. All the tangled threads just slipping apart until we were standing just inside the doorway. Afraid to touch and feeling this nausea of relief or panic and saying goodbye and good luck and maybe someday when we're 90 and ready to go, we'll find each other again. Well, fuck that. Standing in the doorway looking at her, that is the picture I'm waking up to every morning, thinking I sent her out into the world on her own. I don't know who she's with, 
who's touching her. I didn't even touch her the last few days. Six months, living like half a person. I stopped building memories. I can't remember one thing, one accomplishment, one story, one interesting event. Nothing from those six months except the ache of it. Six months it's taken me to realise I may as well be dead already. I'm ready now. I'm really excited. I can't tell you. It'll be worth it to see her again. She won't be expecting me. She won't be expecting me. She's going to get a fright. But if I could just have five minutes, I feel like that would be enough. So, I've got to catch my flight. I've checked the weather forecast. It's not looking good.